Now, I want to take a sidebar here for a second and do some math. Because there is a very common question that you get asked by your client, and I need you to understand how to calculate this. Now, I'm going to show you the theory behind it, and then I'm going to show you the shortcut on how to solve it very quickly in your head. Remember all those people in your life that said, uh, you'll never use algebra, don't worry about it. Well, today's the day, baby. <laughs> We're going to do some algebra, all right? So let's set up a, an example problem so that we can do this uh, calculation. All right, so here's the example I want to go through. Let's say a client calls you and says, hey, Raymond, I am in trouble with the bank. I want to sell my house, and I owe exactly $100,000 on the property. I want to sell it, pay off my first lien. Remember, go back and look at the liens when we talked about it, what a sale was and how they get recorded and paid off. I want to pay off my first lien of $100,000. Can we sell this property so I can pay the bank off and get them off my back? And you say, well, yes, we can. But you understand that you have got about $1,500 in closing costs. Now, we haven't got to what closing costs are. But suffice it to say, you guys all should understand that when you buy a house, you have to pay some fees to do that. All right, you got the courier fee, the recording fee, you got the title insurance policy fee, there may be realtor fees and all kinds of stuff. So for right now, understand that I, the, the agent that this seller has called, is an experienced agent and I know from my experience, that the average seller is going to pay $1,500 in closing costs and fees. Uh, take that as truth right now. So you tell that seller, okay, we can list your house for sale. You're going to have to pay $1,500 in closing costs. Do you have that money? And they go, well, no. So you say, okay, we'll just add it there. But my boss, Raymond is a real mean guy, and he is going to force me to charge you a 7% commission because I gotta get paid as the agent. So we need to sell the house and be able to pay the real estate commission. We've gotta pay the closing costs, and then we have to pay your bank $100,000. So my question to you is, what is the minimum amount that we can accept on a purchase agreement to pay and everybody and pay this first lien off? Very common question, by the way. This is probably the second most common question that you and your professional career will ever get, all right? So hit the pause button for a minute, do some math, and try and tell me what you think the minimum listing price that we can accept would be on this particular deal, all right? Hit pause, go. All right, so I'm assuming you're back. How many of you got Five. Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. No one's watching you anyway. <laughs> All right. Did you get that number? It's wrong. All right. It's wrong. That doesn't work that way. <laughs> if it was that easy, we wouldn't be going over it. So let me go through the math behind this. And this is the hardest math to explain because what most of you people did 
to got to get that number was you took the 7% of 100,000 and added it back on top. You can't do that. That is not how math works. So let's go back through this. And here in a minute, I'm going to prove this to you, all right? So let's go over here and look at this obligation. So what I'm telling you is that this client has to pay those bills. And we're, the question is, is how much money does the buyer have to bring or what is the minimum amount of money that the buyer would need to offer to pay these deals? Well, unfortunately, we do not know the amount of money. Remember, I told you guys I'm not an artist. That is the amount of money that the buyer has to bring. He's going to walk in to the closing, or she, or they, and set a pile of money on the table and say, here's what we agreed on for the sale price. This is what we are trying to figure out. In the algebra world, when you have an unknown, what is the most common letter that we use, right? X. That is what we are trying to figure out. How much money did the buyer bring? But we need to understand that the buyer doesn't, I'm sorry, misspoke. We need to understand that the seller doesn't get all of that money because they have to pay a real estate commission of how much? 7%. That is the only reason we need to know that number. Because if this buyer sets this money on the table, as the real estate agent, we are going to reach in and take the money off of that table of how much? We are going to take 7% of the money. So see if I can do this. I'm going to erase this little bit right here because we took some money out. We took our 7% out of that. So now, how much is left of that pile? Well, it's no longer X, because we took 7% of it. It's actually 93%, right? 100% minus the seven I reached in and took out, leaves 93% of that amount on the table. And 93% as a decimal is written as 0.93. But we need to know that whatever number that is, it has got to pay her bills. And her bills are these two things here. Because they, they've already paid this because we took it out, right? We took it out right here. So this 93% has to equal $101,500. That's the number you get when you add these two together right here. Okay? So there's our algebra problem. 0.93x equals $101,500. But we don't want to know 0.93x. We want to know the full number. So how do you make any number in the world equal one? You divide by that number, right? If you've got the number four and you want to make it one, what do you do? You divide by four. Four divided by four is what? One. If you've got the number eight, you divide by eight. Eight divided by eight is one. If I've got 0.93 and I want to make it what, or I want to make it one, I would divide by what? 0.93. Now, math rules allow that to happen as long as I do what to the other side of the equation. As long as I do the same thing, divide 
by 0.93. I have not changed that at all. But now here's what I get. 0.93x divided by 0.93 makes just 1x, which is what I wanted. And if you take your calculator and do 101,500 divided by 0.93, you get $109,139 and then like 78 cents. That is the minimum amount that seller can accept from a buyer and pay the $100,000 to the bank, pay the $1,500 in closing costs, and pay the 7% commission, all right? So if you don't believe me, let's have a little bit of fun. So let's take the $109,139. We're just going to say $139 to make easy math. Now, that is how much the buyer brought. So the real estate agent says, okay, I get 7% of that. So let's pull out our trusty calculator. Hey, Siri, what is 109,139 times 0.07? $7,639. This is how much the real estate commission is, right? That's the 7% we took out right here. So now we subtract the commission from that number and look what we get, 101,500. And then we've got to pay the closing costs or she has to pay the closing costs. So what we end up with is subtract the closing costs and we told her it'd be $1,500 because we knew that in our experience Look what is left. That will pay off her first lien. This calculation is very common. Now, just for uh, shits and grins, we're going to go back over here and do that calculation one more time. Only we're going to use the number you got because I want to show you what would happen. So let's say as a pretend scenario, you did that math and didn't come to me and ask as the managing broker, you chose it to do it upon yourself and you told her, so you accepted an offer for 108,500. So the first thing that comes off is the real estate commission. And here's what I was trying to explain where you guys took 7% and added it back to the top. And I told you, you can't do that because now the commission is based on the total sales price. So let's pull out our handy calculator and go, Hey Siri, what's 108,500 times 7%? 7,595 dollars. That is how much the real estate commission is left. So you subtract that from the uh, sales price. You now get 100,905 left. You get 100,905 left. She now has to pay her closing costs of $1,500. Oops. She is left with $99,405. That does not pay off her $100,000 loan. She can't pay it off because that number that you got and didn't ask me was wrong. So if you got that 108,500, understand that that number is not right. And in this scenario, Let's say this happened. Guess what's going to happen now? Well, in order to make our client whole, we were supposed to take care of them. That's one of our fiduciary obligations. We are probably going to reduce our commission and give her back, uh, what is that, $595. Oh, I made a mistake, uh, but I'll, I'll take care of it and make sure you're good because 
our loyalty lies to them so that she can have the 100 and pay that off. And now we're less a commission. And I'm going to be mad because you're, I'm going to tell you, why didn't you come to me? You didn't do the math right. We took a number lower than what we should have taken as the right number. Okay? So this is a very common math problem that you will get asked. That is the algebra behind it.